Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Here we are out in the snow again, trying to listen to satellites. And we're currently listening to a Russian satellite. This is the Russian Meteor weather satellite. And that thick bar on the left side of the screen is a digital transmission coming in from it. And I'm using my QFH spiral antenna, which honestly isn't that good for direct overhead passes, but it seems to work okay for offset passes. So I'm currently upgrading my QFH spiral antenna here with this little guy, which is a combination filter and amplifier specifically for those satellite frequencies. This one is the NOAA version. Uh, there's also a geostationary satellite or GOES version. And this company sells a couple others uh, along these lines for specific applications like this. This thing is like $40 online. I didn't want to spend that much money on this project because the rest of this is free and made from trash, but I've heard that these really improve things, so I'm going to give it a try. All right, I've got my antenna up on the roof now, so hopefully it'll get a little better signal from those Russian satellites, as well as the U.S. NOAA satellites. So actually decoding anything from the Meteor satellite is a little more complicated than getting anything from the NOAA satellites. So right now I'm trying to just install all the dependencies and get this system set up on Linux so that it's actually able to get an image from that raw data that I recorded earlier. And I'm now using my antenna up on the roof. So I'm hooked into my wall jack which goes up to the roof. I'm not 100% sure what this type of signal is, but I see this a lot when a satellite is about to come into view. I get this same sort of pattern sort of drifting across the screen. So I don't know if that's some kind of reflection or image from the satellite, if that's something like solar radiation bouncing off of it that's just happening to be picked up at the same frequency. Maybe somebody in the comments can tell me what this is that's drifting across the screen because I see it a lot when I attempt to listen to these satellites. So here's a NOAA satellite pass with that filter amplifier combo on the QFH antenna. Now it's actually a really good signal for where the satellite is because I normally can't see much at all from the satellite when it's that far away. But with that Sawbird LNA device I can see a satellite that's off to the side quite a bit. So now I'm trying to listen to that Russian Meteor satellite again and I have to say that the signal is pretty subtle. Those NOAA weather satellites, it's pretty obvious when you're receiving them because of the pattern they make on the waterfall image in GQRX. But with the Russian one, it's just sort of a general raise in the background noise, so it's really hard to tell if I'm actually receiving anything. And the live tracker says that the Meteor satellite is just about overhead, so we should be receiving something. Okay, this is looking a little more like a signal now. It still is uh, pretty subtle to my eye, though. Alright, so I've recorded the raw data from that Meteor Pass, and now I need to run that through about four or five more steps to get it into a usable image. It's a little more complicated than getting anything out of the NOAA satellites. Now there are a number of guides on how to do this. Uh, this one that I'm looking at at the moment seems to be the most simple and straightforward, so I will throw a link to this website in the description below. This is the slightly mysterious Meteor Demodulator program, and I'm not 100% sure how it's supposed to work, but I believe that all of that flashing static is supposed to sort of crystallize into the center of each of the four quadrants. And if it does so, that means that we got some good data. I've been letting this run for a little while, and it is starting to converge towards the center of each quadrant, so I think that's progress, and that's something I haven't seen before when I tried this prior. Now we're doing yet another mysterious process. It would be nice if somebody came out with an all-in-one way to process these Meteor files, but uh, currently have to run it through a bunch of different commands that are kind of randomly documented and it makes it even more confusing because there was a Meteor M2 satellite and then for a while there was a M2N2 which I think exploded or something but a lot of the information on how to decode these is about one type of satellite versus the other and it's pretty confusing. Alright, I finally got something from the Meteor satellite. I had to run some of those commands a few different times with different variables, but we have an image output. And you can see Lake Superior, you can see Lake Michigan, you can even see this giant iceberg chunk that broke off from Chicago a few days ago, so that's pretty cool. 
I'm going to transfer this over to my other computer and see what other kinds of processing I can do on the image. So here's my first Meteor image file. Uh, ran it through an additional program to rectify it or flatten it out so we're not seeing the curvature of the Earth off to the sides. And this is a lot better quality than those NOAA satellites. You can see a lot more detail in the clouds. Uh, you can actually see uh, cities like you can see Chicago down here and you can see Minneapolis and St. Paul up here and you can see the path of the Mississippi River and you get a really good view of that iceberg in the southern tip of Lake Michigan so this is pretty cool. I'll have to play around with this some more um, I think this is where the signal dropped out. We get this big line here with no data but otherwise this is a pretty cool image that these Russian satellites put out and they are a lot better quality than the NOAA satellites aside from some of these image drops well, that's about all I've got for this video. I might try to play around with some other satellite things in the future, such as geosynchronous weather satellites, and if I get any improvements on this meteor reception system, I might show that as well. I am still playing around with different antenna types. You can check out some of my prior videos for the NOAA satellites and other random radio experimentation. And of course I have a lot of general project and DIY videos and redneck repairs as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.